Alright, welcome to my second VOD review of Over the Rainbow. Over the Rainbow. Um, he's a client of mine from Fiverr. Um, I do Fiverr coaching if anyone's interested. You can check the link in my description for my Fiverr. Um, also, I'm going to link his channel and his Twitch in the uh, description of my video. Um, we're just going to be doing a VOD review today. Um, trying to see what he could do better in this game. Okay, awesome. A really good first knock. I really like the, uh, like how he dropped and stuff. Really good stuff. I also really like the, uh, the landing in... Lava City here. Um, I think it's a really good place to land. Alright, looks like his team wiped the squad. Let's move on to the next fight. Um, so, speaking of Harvester, this is a pretty high traffic area. So anytime you're here, you want to be very passive and very, or at least high alert. Um, because fighting Harvester is typically a bad idea right in the middle of the game. See, it's round two. Um, Usually fighting Harvester is quite a bad idea just because the chance of a third party on any fight that you do take. Um, so if you are here, make sure you're high alert as he's being. Um, and yeah, just make sure you're high alert and get ready for any third parties. If you do fight, you need to wipe that team very, very quickly um, to help you uh, at least soften the blow of a third party. Because, as I talk about very often, the number one way to avoid third parties is to just finish your fights quickly. Alright, so I see he's in a little fight here. Good, good headshots there. I like the R301 control. Um, I would like to see him have more batteries. He, ha he had a chance to craft. Um, now he's out of batteries. Batteries are by far the most important heal in the game for fighting. Um, now he's out of batteries and that sucks. Um, he probably could have crafted himself some batteries when his teammates were crafting there. So, but it is what it is. Not a big deal. He can always slow heal his cells. I would just prefer to see him with more batteries. So it looks like they're sort of holding this team out. They also really want to be careful of this choke here, this part in the choke. Um, if a team comes from there, that's going to suck. That's going to hurt really bad. Um, because then they're going to be pinched in between two teams. If a team did come from this choke, I would highly recommend just rolling them. Since they're stuck here now, this team's got them pinned. Um, they would want to roll this team if, if a team did come from here. Um, they should also consider clearing their backs for any rats or anyone that's going to end up throwing their game in the future. Um, I would really like to see them clear their backs to make sure there's no one back there um, because there might be a team ratting back there or skeeving, playing really slow, and I would hate to see their game get thrown because there's a team behind them. Um, as for this, really good hold, like they're playing the choke well. Um, maybe they did check behind them, I just like to double check and make sure there's no one back there because that could be the end of the ga their game if there is a team back there. Um, obviously I'm fast forwarding a lot so maybe I'm slightly out of context, but as you can see, he's going back there to check. Uh, I would like to see him check a little bit more thorough uh, before that, um, or at least having one designated role maybe, um, at most, like having one person on the team have a designated role of watching their backs. Um, yeah, so uh, they decide to rotate a little early here. Let's see how it ends up working for them. There's multiple teams here. They do need to be very mindful of that team behind them. So there's going to be a little bit of luck involved in them moving up on this. Um, see, as I said, that they're getting shot in the back. They also only have six cells, so I'd be playing very, very slow paced unless they have the opportunity to have a nice clean wipe on this team. Um, right here, you either want to play slow paced or get a nice clean wipe on that team because you only have six cells, no bats. So uh, you want to just have a much clearer decision of, of what you're doing. Obviously, I think he's solo queuing, so that isn't really, um, you know, 
it is what it is in this case. Like when, when you're solo queuing, uh, there's not a lot you can do to uh, to have clear decisions between you and your teammates. Either take over as IGL or suffer the fact that your teammates probably aren't the best IGLs. Um, so that sucks. Right here, I wouldn't be poking. He only has enough heals to heal himself one time. Uh, so yeah, I, I really like how they find a place in zone. They take this house. Uh, that's really good. You want to be playing nice and defensive in this situation because um, you have only three cells, so you, you can't you can't play aggressive unless unless you have an opportunity for a clean wipe, as they do here, which is really good. I think they're going to get the clean wipe, and now he can get a nice armor swap off and uh, steal some of that guy's heals. Um, I would look to armor swap on one of those boxes immediately, absolutely immediately. Uh, the fact that they haven't gotten third partied yet is absolute pure luck. Um, and if they had gotten third partied, um, they would be dead. The other way to counteract third parties is to get an armor swap off nice and quick. I know he did look for an armor swap on that box, but you got to be grabbing heals, grabbing armor swaps absolutely instantly in that situation. Um, it doesn't matter if you need to go outside for an armor swap, doesn't matter. Uh, you you got to find a way to get yourself full health in that situation to counter this third party in a more efficient fashion. Um, I think he does maybe end up winning this. Um, if he does, obviously it's just because he's better. Um, that doesn't take away from my advice in going for the armor swap. Yeah, see, so he, he ends up dying there. A uh, little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. So, uh, anytime you're holding this building, I really like where he's holding it from. Let me get started off with that. Uh, holding behind that staircase right here, the staircase, holding behind it. Because you have clear vision on the door that's over here, and you have clear vision of the staircase. No one runs backwards, it's impossible to run backwards, so anytime that you're trying to penetrate this uh, upper portion of the building, the second level of these buildings on World's Edge, um, you want to not take these stairs if there's someone up here because there's so many angles that you can get shot from, uh, and if someone's holding here, it's just it's going to be almost impossible. So I really like holding right here for uh, if you're holding this building because you have vision of the stairs and vision of the door, and there's no way you can get shot from behind aside... Uh, other than the windows, you do need to be mindful of the windows. So let's rewind just a little to uh, to go over that once more. So as you can see, the staircase right here, he has clear vision of the staircase, clear vision of the window. That's how you always want to play these buildings, if this building in, in here in World's Edge, if you are looking to play a more defensive play style. So let's watch how it works out for him. I think it's going to work very well. Let's check it out. So see, clear vision of the staircase, clear vision of the door. Perfect. Big PK shots. Let's go. Um, I'd like to see him maybe take his time a little more with the Peacekeeper. It is such a precision heavy weapon. Um, I would like to see him just sort of take his time a little more um, to make sure he's guaranteeing that those are big hits on those shots. Um, also, maybe consider taking a different angle on that when he slides down those stairs because uh, it's going to be tough to react to with the Peacekeeper and and uh, it's, it's all about setting yourself up for shots you know you can hit. Immediately, the first thing needs to be an instant armor swap. I don't care about the level of the armor. I don't care. Um, you need to immediately get an armor swap down to counter the third party. With that being said, I may be, I don't know where uh, other teams are. There may not, he may know that there's no team skyhook, uh, which I obviously don't know um, because I did fast forward, so I might be slightly out of context. But um, in most cases, even if it's a red to white armor, in order to avoid the third party after a fight, I want you to switch from a red armor to a white armor. doesn't matter. Um, the white armor is going to help you more than an empty red. See, his armor is still empty. Uh, you got to get that healed way faster than that. Um, it's it's just not, not a good way to be consistent in avoiding third parties when your armor is empty like that. you got to get that healed up faster. Even if it means swapping from a red to a white, it, it really doesn't matter. Because um, I, I would much rather have a white armor and a third party than an empty red, obviously. And you can see that's what every single pro does. Every single pro is willing to swip, switch from a, a red to a white after a fight, at least. And until you can get that medkit up, until until you can get your teammates revived, and until you can get your white health full, um, it's fully worth it to have a a uh, armor that's worse than whatever armor you have. So I think they're probably going to end it, run into a team here because the video is about to end. Uh, fast forward just a little okay perfect so team here let's check it out team in train station 
Uh, he is playing Loba, so you have the option to queue to the roof, uh, to queue up to that glass above the uh, above the train station. That is an option, um, but I think the way he's playing it right here is fine. It's just unfortunately, so uh, their comp is Octane, Bloodhound, Loba, so he is the second most mobile character on the team, so he can afford to overextend. I would like to see him take slightly more aggressive angles early on and utilize his Bloodhound scan to uh, pl play off his Bloodhound scan and try to take a nice aggressive angle. Um, also, there's climb ups on that front side, so he could probably utilize the climb up. I'm not a huge fan of that Loba bracelet because he doesn't know where all three people are, um, so I'm not a huge fan of the Loba bracelet at all. Um, because Loba braceleting into people is oftentimes a very, very bad idea. So if you don't know where all three people are, maybe all three people see him there. Um, it's usually a very bad idea. Um, I think he gets punished a little bit for it, but his opponent isn't the best. So he doesn't, uh, we'll see what ends up happening. I'm just not a huge fan of it. See, because as you can see, he Loba braceleted onto that guy. And he... That the opposing player wasn't the best player. Uh, he still almost killed him because he wasn't the best player. But uh, as you can see, it's just, it's just uh, it almost never works out in your favor if you're if you're playing Loba in that situation to uh, bracelet into people, and they end up dying there. So that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, that's the way it is. So thanks for watching. Uh, feel, feel free to like and subscribe. I'd be much appreciated. Um, I'll, I also do coaching on Fiverr. So I am a five-star rated coach. I would appreciate it if you guys check it out. I would love to schedule a session. Um, also check out his YouTube and his Twitch uh, uh, with the link in the description. I'm going to link it in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.